take. <laughs> The Umarax RP5 is 72 centimeters in length and weighs three pounds, 12 ounces, minus any scope or CO2 capsules. And yes, it's powered by two CO2 capsules. Umarax have gone to town on the box for the RP5. Look at that. It's all padded and everything. I think that's soft enough to be made of the finest dead butterfly wings. The barrel is 30 centimetres long and it's a good one, choked at the end, so Umarax say, which helps the pellet to be more accurate. The gun structure is metal, with attached parts made of good quality plastic, such as the grip stock and the pump action forend. The Picatinny rail on top can be removed, but then you might get an issue with installing the magazine, so leave it on unless you want to use high scope mounts. The whole gun is ambidextrous, with the resettable safety on the left and the right, and the stock works for lefties and righties too. It's a thin stock to save weight, again made of a good quality plastic. It's 2.8 centimeters wide. Charging the RP5 with CO2 is simple. First thing you need to be sure of is that this top hat just here is completely screwed out before you start. Then undo this part here. Like that, look. Then, with the gun at a slight angle, because you don't want to drop the cartridge in vertically because you might split it, you want to slide your first cartridge in neck first, like that. Then, you want to slide your second cartridge in sort of bum first, like that. There you go. And you take your cap and carefully screw it back on. And then what you're going to do is tighten this top one down. And this is the one that's going to push the two capsules together inside. But there you go. You're in and you've got CO2 and the gun is charged. The trigger is plastic and it's set in the factory. And I can't see any adjustment. The instruction manual doesn't show any either. It's got a sort of double action inside, which works with the four end pump system. To use that 4M pump system, you have to hold this button in here and you hold it in when you pull it back and push it forward. That's quite easy. It is a very smooth button though, so your fingers can slip off it quite easily. There's also a removable Picatinny rail at the front. The barrel floats inside a shrouding, which does nothing to damper the sound. The front of the rifle is threaded half inch UNF for a silencer. Put a silencer on it. This thing is noisy and I'm putting a hug it on mine. Why? Well, it's quite simple. You can never have too much hug it. Ta-da! But the cutouts on the side are a nice touch and it makes the gun stand out. The metal work on the barrel is quite abrasive. If you rub your finger on it or just catch it, it sort of leaves a bit of your skin texture on top of it. It's quite odd. On the side of the gun, it says made in Germany. So Umarax are telling us that all of this is made in Germany. Not the red dot scope on top, mind. I've no idea where that's made. Let's just say Donald Trump made that. This is the five shot magazine and you've got to get the five shots in and it works on this sort of spring horizontal basis here. So what you've got to do is, and I'm doing this on camera mind, squeeze in a little bit here, line up your hole and drop your pellet in, look, and give it a wiggle and hopefully it'll settle down. And then you squeeze along until your next hole lines up. And that's your five shot mag loaded and ready to go in. Now the pellets don't fall straight throughout the back because you've got this little retaining slider here. And when the gun goes in, when the magazine goes in the gun, this little pin moves back, look, to allow the pellet to push through. But that is your five shot mag. And you get two of them in the box. To put the magazine in the gun, make sure the gun is switched to fire. Draw the cocking hammer back on the fore end. Take your magazine and drop it in over the top of the pin in the middle, just there. Bring that forward, and the gun has now got a pellet in and it's ready to shoot. 
Now this is a CO2 gun. So in the UK, don't expect this to be a long range blaster. I've tested the rifle from a bench position going from 10 yards to 15 and to 20 with both red dot and scope firing five shots each time. You get around 57 shots from one charge with the Umarax RP5. I'll put the chart on the screen now. I did get one shot during my testing which went over 400 feet per second, 403 feet per second to be precise, and I was using a JSB 15.89 when I fired that shot. So it doesn't matter if you stick lighter pellets in, it's really not going to increase the speed that much. I tried the 14s. I tried the 11s, the lead-free ones, and I've got to be honest with you, if you stick those through it, it completely throws its toys out of the pram. So for me, it's around 50 to 60 shots, and you're going to get around four foot-pounds, no matter what pellet you put through it. Something I do need to point out about CO2 is it's not pre-charged air, so it does throw curveballs where temperature comes into play. So for example, if you're shooting on a really cold day or cold evening, your point of aim is going to be a little bit lower. If you're shooting on a warm day, your point of aim is going to be a little bit higher. It's not an exact science, but it is something you will need to take note on if you're buying a CO2 rifle. I bought these at Utah Air Guns last year, and I think the RP5 is ideal for trying them out. Putting a lot of expensive accessories on the RP5 isn't going to improve its performance. The scope I've been using is a budget scope out of a package from a gun that I've done before. I've got a red dot on top and I've got a budget bipod off Amazon. This thing is accurate for pest control out to 15 or 20 yards max. If you want to shoot tins further than that, yes, stick a cheap scope on, but you're not going to hit them every single time. So. Don't go spending a lot of money on the rifle once you've bought it. It is what it is. You don't need to blow the bank to bling it up. There are, however, a couple of irritations with the RP5. Let me try and show you. There you go. <laughs> Straight off. I didn't even have to try and make it do that. From a bench position on a bipod, it's really hard to get it to cock and shoot every single time. And the reason for that is because you have to push this forward when you load the gun really firmly, like that, okay? So you do that and it fires. But if you come back and go forward and don't ram it forward, the gun doesn't fire. Now you might think, well, push it a bit harder. Well, you can, push it a bit harder but the thing is is that then now I've got to take the magazine out and shoot it because otherwise the gun will double load but the thing is if you push that too hard forward on with a bipod there you stand the chance I mean I've got the knack of it now but I've rammed my hand into that bipod a couple of times <laughs> See, so if you're shooting this and I'm sorry to make such a fuss about it, but you will discover it if you buy one yourself, that if you're shooting with it off a bipod, right, be careful because you have to push that forward firm enough. Ah, oh, see? You take that off, bring it back, shoot it. All right, and then if you do it again, I know I haven't put the mag in, now it fires again. Do you see my point? So my advice is leave the bench at home and stand up and shoot because that is when the RP5 comes alive. My second annoyance is the stock. Now I've tried to remove the stock to turn this into a pistol, but the top screw there is anti-tampered, so I can't do it. So it kind of makes me scratch my head because this is then clearly a rifle, but it's set to the power level of a pistol. And I, I, 
I just don't get why that is. Once the power starts to drop on the gun, you'll notice it because it goes more put than bang. What you need to do is simply unscrew that top cap there, like that, look. Okay, there you go, there's a little bit to let go. And then you undo the second screw down, which you can hopefully see on camera. And then you're simply gonna tip your two CO2 cart cartridges out, dispose of them in an environmentally friendly way, and then put two more in. To conclude then, the Umarax RP5 is a close range ratter. 15, maximum 20 yards. That's it. If you want to plink tins, then you can stick a scope on the top and you can shoot it a little bit further. It's extremely well presented. I love the idea it comes in a box. And if you want to plink tins in your backyard, it's going to be ideal for that. And it's going to be a massive hit. It's original and it's different. And I think people are going to like it. But for me, I think someone needs to fiddle with it and maybe make a PCP version and then that would become awesome. If you've liked the review and it's been helpful to you, I'd be most grateful if you could give it a big thumbs up by pressing the button below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I tell you all the ins and outs about these air guns and hopefully I'll entertain you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.